Hello and welcome to Where the Living Room Used to Be, a podcast about Rhode Island's music scene. It's James. This mini episode has Kay Bellardinelli passing along a songwriting technique she learned about 10 years ago at a music conference up in Boston. Plus, she shares her thoughts on what it means to make music your own way, and she gives probably one of the most insightful perspectives on the creative process I've ever heard. During our conversation, as well as in the full episode, Kay discusses the story of how Mars' song Sick of It came to be. At the start, the band was actually working on covering an Elliott Smith song. The Mark track eventually became an original song on their album Fill Your Lungs, and I've included that for you at the end of the episode. Enjoy! Okay, I wanted to ask you, um, has there been a piece of music advice that you may have received from like a, a bandmate, a mentor, or like an engineer, uh, just like a you know a fellow musician um, that stuck with you that you would like to share with with the listeners now. Yeah, so this isn't a piece of advice that I received directly from somebody, but I went to a workshop at Girls Rock Camp in Boston mm-hmm. um, several years ago. I guess it was just like a decade ago now, um, and. It was led by Jonas Police Woman, who's a musician. Okay. Um, and it was a songwriting workshop, and I hadn't really written songs yet at that point. And she was saying that, well, to write vocals, she'll just start with like nonsense words. Okay. Before the real word words come. And sometimes the real words end up just kind of like coming out yeah. subconsciously. So is it more to get like a melody or just to, or is it more like a free writing exercise? I guess it's kind of like free writing okay. a little. I mean, that's how I interpret it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, but yeah, you're feeling out like the rhythm and the mm-hmm. melody also, but not worrying, get, not getting too caught up about communicating a message yet because mm-hmm. I think it's just too much all at once. And, um, get flowing with it, and it's okay to not have real words. Yeah, kinda, yeah. Um, and I've, I've found that really useful. And hearing it from somebody who's, uh, she's put out, like, she's much more yeah, yeah. successful than <laughs> I am and has put out lots of records and is, like, a bit older than me. And I just, uh, having somebody like that be like, oh, I just do nonsense mm-hmm. words. I don't know. I mean, would you say that there's like self doubt that kind of comes in with these things or just like removing some of those like hurdles with that stuff? Like hearing a, an artist that, that you, you know, can look up to that just say, oh, they do these things, you mm-hmm. know, at least I know that's what it is for me. Like if I see a, a drummer that does that and be like, oh, I thought that I just wasn't you know, at that level yet, but they're just like, no, it's, it's, it's fine if you do these things as long as you do it, you know? Yeah, I think it, it shows that there's just steps that you go through mm-hmm. and, like, you don't just lay a golden egg out of nowhere yeah. and it, it's, like, a fully formed idea and it's already great. It just, mm-hmm. like, comes out of you, I think, um, imagining a great song being written and there's a point where it's just sloppy and Mm -hmm. yeah um there's a process there's a you know a beginning and an end there's an arc to it all that kind of stuff yeah yeah Yeah. during the same workshop she also mentioned like if you're stuck and don't know what to write to try writing uh a new a new version of a song you love oh like a song by somebody else oh okay yeah um and she that perform at the end of the workshop. She performed this cover of a John Lennon song, yeah, called "Woman," and it was incredible. It like totally <laughs> blew me away. Yeah, and um, 
I was thinking about it recently and I listened to the original John Lennon version and I'm like, I really like don't like it. And it's like, <laughs> com it's so different. Yeah. Um, it's like more, it's kind of upbeat and poppy. Yeah. But she did this like heartbreaking, stripped down acoustic guitar wow. version, just her and it was just like amazing. And, and I, and it was incredible that it's not her song. Yeah. Like it seemed like she she connected with it so mm -hmm. much and like really sold it. Yeah. So I found that very inspiring. Yeah, that's cool. Also, and good advice. Like. Yeah. It's kind of what I did with that Elliot Smith song. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like I I love that song, and I wanted to do a version that was just like totally different and do my own. Mm -hmm. thing and then that ended up turning into an original song but I think I probably got that idea to do a cover but I think the way that she described it as like do a new version of a song you love yeah it just what how I interpreted that was different than just saying write a cover yeah, yeah, or just perform this cover, learn how to play it. It's like a, you know, yeah. adapt this song, or you know, make it your own, or just yeah, use that New as a, like a framework for something. But then yeah, just have it evolved with your own tastes and inspiration. So yeah, that's cool. I dig it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then from you know your own experience of playing and and writing and recording, um, has there been something over that time that you've learned that you would like to? to share with others. Mm. Um, yeah, I would say to just like do shit your own way mm -hmm. and don't get caught up with being like a real, quote unquote real musician or something mm -hmm. and that you can write music and like not know anything about what you're doing and I think yeah. it's like fine. Yeah. Um, it's great if you, that's what you want to do, but like if you don't want to learn scales, um, don't fucking learn scales. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Or like you don't want to practice to a metronome, just don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> like do do things um, how you want to do them. You can like take things that are not musical instruments and make sounds with them. Mm -hmm. Anything that makes sound can be music. Mm -hmm. It's just, if you want it to be music, it's mm -hmm. music. Yeah. Or uh, make up your own chords. That's something I do. Okay. I don't know. I don't know chords. I like, yeah, I write yeah. stuff on guitar, but I, I just sort of like feel around for what sounds good. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'll, I'll put things in like different tunings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sort of unusual Two yeah. things and just play something till it sounds good. But you've learned to write that down, though. Yes, yeah. but I write it down. I write down the tuning and I write down what notes yeah. or what strings and frets. Yeah. I don't know what the notes are, but yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I love that just because yeah, I mean it, it seems um, that you can just. I don't know, that become less inhibited with these things or that, you know, like what things are, again, quote unquote, supposed to be, you know? Um, yeah. I'm just like, well, this is what a chord progression should be, you know? Um, and there's just, I mean, a lot of people will stay in that that lane and there's a lot of people that sound yeah. a lot the same, you know? Um, right, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but it, yeah, if you, I don't know, again, I've talked to so many people and it's like, if you can just play from your heart and just mm. make the music as close to what you want it to be, that that's what's going to resonate with, with other people just because it's just honest and it's true and it's yeah. not this manufactured thing, you know? Um, yeah. So that's, that's really cool. And there might be people that make you feel like whatever, you're not a real mus musician or something or like, give you imposter syndrome <laughs> or you mm -hmm. give yourself imposter syndrome, but you have to just learn to tune that stuff out. Yeah. Uh, unless it's constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. I think it can be useful to learn things. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think it's also important to know that you don't have to. Yeah. Necessarily. It's just art. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, but exactly. Um, or yeah, I mean, it just seems that probably a lot of those times would just be someone else's like insecurity kind of coming out with, yeah. you know, whenever they see something that isn't like the, the norm. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, we've talked about it. Uh, like, and I guess that there's nothing, I mean, if you're a musician and you want to be like, super technical, super on point, like the best drummer, you know, like mm. then like go for that. Um, you know, I've personally, I've just been inspired by people that are just like emotionally driven, you know, mm. like people that just hit the drums hard that are just um, playing with that versus like a super technical person, you know? Um, but yeah, I guess it just take, you know, it took me a long time though, to be honest. And so it's even kind of cool to hear you say that of just, yeah. Being able to kind of shed that stuff because you'd come and be like, well, this guy's, this, you know, this person is doing something that I want to do and I can't get there because it's this, this or that or whatever. And, and just yeah. shedding those ideas and thoughts and just continuing on, you know, so. Yeah, we can't have everybody following the same rules because no. yeah. then it would be boring. Yeah, yeah. Perfection is, is boring. If you're doing things like exactly the correct mm -hmm. way from like a music theory perspective I guess I mean I don't know what the correct way is but it seems yeah. like there are people who think there's chords that yeah go together and like there's time signatures and you stay within the yeah but um yeah if you play exactly perfect mm -hmm. Why not just have AI do that at this point? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> have a fucking machines, robot. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, there's value in humans yeah. making things um, and being creative. Mm -hmm. I've always loved like imperfections with recordings too. Yeah. Um, like totally. whether it's just like, yeah, uh, a room recording and you can hear like the the chair creaking in the middle of it. Yeah. You know, like just not having that stuff. Like I, I appreciate artists that have done that. You know, the few that come to mind are just, um, cause they could have been like, well, no, we need to be in this completely sterile mm. place and it needs to be like perfectly everything. But it just, it takes away that like connection of like, Oh, I can imagine this person in this room, you know? And, and I know that that's what your own work was of like, you know, recording in this, you know, cabin and, and just, you know, creating these things. Like, yeah. Um, you know, I hope people listen to this and listen to the music that you made and make those connections and, and have a different um, ear for that of just now knowing a little bit more of what uh, went into those things, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I know I do, but um, so. Uh, and then, you know, I'm always curious, like, what inspires musicians, you know? And it could be, like, not just with your songwriting. Yeah, I mean, you're welcome to talk about that, but just, like, mm -hmm. in, you know, it can just be more in general as well. Yeah, I'm I'm inspired by like regular life a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh just like the moon. The moon is amazing. Mm -hmm. Just like the moon in the sky. Yep. Every time I see it, I'm like That's cool. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like stuff like the moon or and plants and wild animals. I really like animals that people th think of as pests i think that they're cool okay um <laughs> like what's your favorite raccoons oh, okay oh, yeah i love raccoons yeah i love when people complain about raccoons or when they like get into mischief and yeah i think it's really cool how they've they thrive off of our trash mm -hmm. um and we don't build our environment our built environment for them, but they find their ways into it. Yeah. But not just raccoons, but like squirrels yeah. and rats and mice. And, mm -hmm. uh, they're great. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's yeah. very cool. Pigeons. Pigeons I um, maybe relate to a little bit less, but yeah. I feel like a rat I could relate to. Well, definitely, yeah. Or supposed to rac yeah, raccoons with their little hands. I, I remember seeing a comic that, uh, oh. like a comic strip that was basically just a, a rat talking to a squirrel and asking the, the rat asking the squirrel who their PR people are. 
<laughs> just because of that type of thing. Just because squirrels, and yes, I mean, I think people might think of them as pests, but they're not at that same level. Like, if you see a no. rat and a squirrel, you're like, oh, the squirrel's cute, the rat, I'm going to freak out. But they're kind of, like, almost the yeah. same. I mean, I don't want to get into, like, the, the species, but, you know, like, in, in our worlds, and, you know, one has a fluffy tail and one doesn't, but they're about right. the same, you know, and completely... Uh, thought about in a different way yeah. um, but they but have their purpose and you know and i can, can kind of like take a step back of like you know where we are as humans uh living in these you know in this place you know and mm. and just how everything connects you know like it, it kind of takes away that like pest thing like they're you know, yeah things things can be here for a reason you know so yeah well, that's cool I, have, I made like a really big list of things that i'm inspired by also, strange coincidences yeah. and, like, mysteries. I saw, I guess, like, a ghost cat okay. recently. Okay, what do you mean by that? I saw, there was a cat outside. Of, of like, your house? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. And um, at night, like, mm -hmm. I walked out. Is that a problem, like, that sound? No, no. Okay, yeah. um... I walked out onto the porch and looked out at the driveway, and there was cat there looking at me. And mm -hmm. we just sta stared at each other for a while. And then the cat turned away and, like, walked to go down the driveway mm -hmm. and, like, stepped into a shadow behind a car and then disappeared. Like, I was <laughs> looking at it. Yeah. And then it was gone and, but i didn't see it like go under the car yeah, which yeah. maybe you would think it was like it was just gone and then i like i went out and to i had to it. like yeah. go look under the car or like look around on the other side of the car the cat was just gone i think that's a ghost cat yeah just yeah weird like yeah serious stuff like that happening yeah. and also that's like per personal yeah. Things that happen to me, like heartbreak and betrayal, mm -hmm. um, bad experiences. It takes a while to get to a point where, like, usually mm -hmm. it, it, I kind of have to, like, get past it and then look back and then I can make art about it. Mm -hmm. But um, I think... For me, personal experiences and um, just absorb. I'm just always absorbing that, and then my environment, and also music and culture and films and stuff. Even if I'm not making art, and I think of it as an input and output phase, mm -hmm. that um, I'm constantly. I'm always an artist, and I'm always in the process of making art, even if it doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. Because I'll go through an input phase where I don't have any output, because mm -hmm. I'm in the input phase. Yeah. And I'm, like, absorbing these experiences and culture. Yeah. And then I'll, like, go through waves of output. Yeah. Um, and that's when I'm, like writing music mm -hmm. or um, recording mm -hmm. or making visual art. And that's been a comfort for me to know because I've had what seemed like dry spells or like okay. writer's block yep. kind of stuff, but it's all part of it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty wise. Thank you. It is, like legit. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've never thought of it like that. And I don't write songs, but it's yeah. just like I've just I've played in a lot of bands and worked with songwriters mm. and they can get kind of bummed out. And or it does seem like it's like almost this. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, maybe you can kind of speak to it, but like looking back that there will be this period where they're yeah in that input phase where they're not writing songs. And it does seem yeah. like the, all of a sudden they're like, I wrote like three songs this weekend or whatever and it's just like it's that we're just yeah. kind of coming but it has never been presented in that way of like I'm just taking in this these experiences the stimuli I'm just kind of compiling this stuff for this other stuff you know for these other things to, to come out you know it's yeah it's an interesting way to put it that's awesome I kind of figured it out after I was in that abusive relationship and like when I was in it I didn't make any art for like oh, okay. three four years so pretty much wow. like yeah. yeah it was like a really long 
dry spell. I journaled a little bit, but like not very much. Uh -huh. um, I've journaled a lot less than I typically do. Okay. Because um, I think that my my spirit was just sort of like dead. Mm -hmm. It felt like, but um, but I've made a lot of art about that relationship specifically, or just like that time in my life, mm -hmm. and it's all. It's all part of it, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, I just have to, if I am not um, making, like, making anything concrete, I have to trust that it's just going to come mm -hmm. eventually. It might come tomorrow, or it might come two years from now, or like, mm -hmm. but it's all, especially if there's suffering happening, like, Suffering, it, it, suffering sucks, but it's also, it's, it's like prime material for making art, too. Yeah, yeah. Not that you should, like, go out of your way to suffer, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, like... <laughs> yeah, don't get hit by a car but on it's, purpose. it's the <laughs> silver lining yeah. of, of suffering. It's yeah. like, if yeah. you're an artist, is that you can make something out of it. And if you're not an artist, then um, you can maybe use the experiences to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It gives you empathy in theory. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people who don't think of them as artists are actually creative in some way in their life. They just like don't think of it that way mm -hmm. too. Like maybe they're really into cooking or yeah. gardening. Um, and like those can be thought of as art. Mm-hmm. It could also be thought of as therapy, mm -hmm. and yeah, art is art is everywhere. Yeah, art yeah. is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> so well, yeah, yeah. To theme. kind of circle back to what you're saying of just taking a, a wider view of these things and getting out, you know, away from, um, yeah, like what the convention is or what the mm. like definite like. Well, if you're an artist, then you need to be you know, producing this type of art and be in a gallery and right. all this stuff. Or if you're a writer, then you need to have novels and be in bookstores and whatever else it is, but just being able to, like, like not do that stuff, you know? Like, yeah. Just be like, well, I'm an artist and I'm, you know, creating these things, you know, like on the, I'm doing these incredible stone sculptures on the beach and then they are temporarily there, you know? Like, mm. it's, it's still, you know, being recognized or whatever else it is. Or yeah, or, yeah like what you're saying with gardening and... Yeah, I mean, like, just people that, yeah, can cook at home and they might just think that it's, well, I'm just preparing food for my family, but, like, yeah. they put a lot of love and, and, you know, technique into what they're doing, so. Mm. It's right on. That's yeah, good. well, Kay, uh, this was all some really amazing things that you shared, and uh, I appreciate you doing that, and, um, yeah, I found it helpful. Other people dig it, too, um, but, yeah, thanks so much. Thank you.